It's certainly no secret that the Rocky Mountains have long been a hot spot for strange activity. I hope you all enjoy the assortment of experiences that people recently sent in to me. My wife and I had been looking to buy a home in the Rockies, but it took us nearly two years of looking to find any homes at all that would work for us, but we finally found the perfect home for us. We'd been living there for about seven years and enjoying it very much. It has a really big deck with the most beautiful view of the Rocky Mountains. Well, because of that irresistible view, we spent a lot of time using our deck. Well, one morning we were enjoying our coffee on the deck when we spotted something huge walking around. Both my wife and I stood up, but whatever it was that we saw was gone already. The next time we went shopping, we decided we were going to buy a couple of pairs of binoculars to take out onto the deck with us. We were hoping to get a better look at whatever that thing was if it came back. We didn't see anything again until almost a year later. Because so much time had passed, we'd completely forgotten about that initial sighting. But when I saw my wife pick up the binoculars, I wondered right away if she spotted it again. I asked her what she was looking at, and she told me to go grab the other pair of binoculars. What I saw through those binoculars was obviously very tall, but at a distance I couldn't say just how tall. It walked just like a person, and it appeared to be fully covered with hair. Again, it was gone very quickly. We didn't know for sure yet what we were looking at, but we were really glad that our home was set up much higher than where this thing was walking around. After that day, we would see it frequently. Well, we either saw the same one or a different one, we couldn't say for certain. And then we started hearing these knocking sounds. And these knocking sounds stood out because they sounded like they were being made by someone intentionally. One day, I was outside doing a few chores, and that's when I saw it. I just stopped. I was too stunned to move an inch. And just then, my wife came out of the house, and she saw it too. Well, she screamed and ran back inside. I was still standing in the same spot. I noticed that while my wife and I were shocked by what we saw, this creature didn't seem to be paying any attention to us at all. It just kept moving. We both knew what we had just seen. It was a Bigfoot. My wife was really upset. She said that she wasn't going to stay there anymore. She was not going to be in the path of Bigfoot. Well, she won that argument and we put our house on the market. We wound up moving away from the isolation and the peace of the mountain to a much more populated area. Bigfoot definitely does exist in the Rockies, and unfortunately, it was the reason that we gave up our dream home. My name is Kadu, and my wife's name is Carol. We live in Colorado, and in 2001, we were really excited because Carol and I were purchasing our very first home. Well, five months later, in October of 2001, I was in my driveway changing the oil in my car, and it seemed like any other normal day, and it was a really nice sunny day. I was nearly done with changing the oil, so I was taking a short break, and I had just popped open a can of beer. And that's when I noticed that it suddenly got very dark out. I thought maybe a storm was rolling in. I thought clouds were passing over. I looked up at the sky to see if it looked like rain, but that's the moment I almost pissed my pants. I ran into the house yelling for my wife. I was yelling to tell her that there was something in the sky. My wife and I were both looking outside up at the sky. We didn't see anything at first. My wife was looking at me like I was crazy. But just a couple of minutes later, there it was, flying around up there. My wife isn't looking at me like I'm crazy anymore. Her mouth was hanging open in shock. This giant bird was flying around up there, and then it landed on the roof of a building that was right across the road. That bird was huge. I'd never seen a bird this size before. It had a giant wingspan. My wife was saying that this simply couldn't be, that these things don't exist that anything this large would be extinct. It flew around for about 10 minutes, occasionally landing on that building. Then it took off. We waited for it to come back, but it didn't. 
After a while, we gave up waiting for it to return, and then we went to the computer to compare what we saw to other large birds. And I know how unbelievable this sounds, but we know what we saw, and what we saw looked exactly like a pterodactyl. It was an unusual shade of brown, kind of like a muddy, muted brown, and the wingspan had to be at least 24 feet wide. This thing was massive. I know it sounds unbelievable, but we observed it for about 10 minutes and were sure about what we saw. After it flew away, it didn't come back, ever. But I wasn't taking any chances. I didn't finish my oil change until the next day. Honestly, I was afraid to be outside after seeing that bird. A bird that size could have easily killed me. This is 100% the truth. Both my wife and I saw this. My name is Bob and my wife is Bernice and we love the Rocky Mountains. So we decided we were going to look for a home in that area. We also love to fish. So we knew that we wanted to buy a house close to a good fishing spot. It took us a while but we finally found a cabin. It didn't have everything that we wanted, but the location was perfect. So we went ahead and bought it and fixed it up to our liking. Our home has a beautiful large deck and we enjoy spending a lot of time out there, especially having meals out on the deck. We love our cabin and the beautiful surroundings, but we aren't crazy about how often it snows. Sometimes it even snows in the summer months. It was almost always just my wife and I. We never did get a lot of visitors. People complain that our cabin is difficult to get to. I can't argue with them. Even we didn't like the long, steep roads. We try to get all of our errands and shopping done in two or three days every month. We don't like to leave our cabin very often. But even with our little complaints, we wouldn't trade our cabin for anything in the world. It was one of the best decisions that we ever made. My wife and I love being outdoors. Our deck, barbecue, and the fire pit probably get more use than most things inside of our home. So one day, late in the afternoon, we were having a nice dinner out on the deck when we suddenly heard something which caused us to look around. We saw something running and we knew immediately that this just wasn't some normal animal. When it got a little closer, well, we saw that it was a giant wolf that was capable of running on two legs just like a man. This thing looked terrifying. Its head was so big and it looked really beefy and muscular and it was all black. Not wanting to make any noise, we didn't move at all, not an inch. It stopped and it sniffed at the air. And then to our great relief, we watched it run off. We sat there talking about what we just saw and how strange that creature was. Just a short time later, we saw it a second time. It was coming back from the same direction we saw it running in in the first place. At least it appeared to be the same one. Well, about a week later, we saw it yet again. It just ran through the area below us. I really wish we would have seen it again for a little bit longer. I knew it had to be Dogman, and I would have loved to be able to observe it for a while, at a safe distance, of course. My name is Wayne and my brother's name is Ernie. In 1991, both of us were living in Colorado. Ernie asked me if I wanted to join him on a trip he was taking to the mountains. At the time, Ernie was 26 and I was 20. It was just going to be a weekend trip, early Friday morning until Sunday evening. It sounded like a great time to me and I couldn't wait to go. Now, Ernie was a real outdoorsman, but I wasn't. But I thought I'd give it a try and going with Ernie was the perfect opportunity. We set off on the four hour drive at 7 a.m. that Friday morning. And as soon as we got to the destination, we got what we needed and we set out on our hike. We hiked for a solid five hours and then Ernie spotted a place to make camp. We had a really good time that evening and I slept like a rock that night. I woke up at 6 a.m. the next morning to the smells of a good breakfast. Ernie was cooking. After breakfast, we set out on another hike. I was having a really good time. Saturday went just as well as our first day there. I was having fun and I was really glad that I agreed to go on the trip. 
Sunday came, and it was now time for us to start making our way back to Ernie's car, and that would be at least a five-hour hike. We finished gathering our belongings, but before we left the campsite, we suddenly heard this really loud bang. Not having any idea what caused the sound, we both instantly dropped down to our knees. We looked around for a disturbance of some kind, and what we saw coming up and over that mountain was shocking. It was a man, but not just any man. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you he was at least 16 feet tall. He was huge. And of course, we were frightened. He had what looked to be a large amount of vines twisted around his waist and fashioned in a way that covered his genital area. My brother touched my arm lightly, and he put his finger to his mouth and mouthed the words, Don't move. We watched this 16-foot-tall giant look around, but then he went to the left. Thank God he didn't walk in our direction. I don't know if there were any more of these giants in Colorado or even other places, but on that trip, my brother and I saw one of them, and we believe that there are most likely more of them. My brother finally convinced me that we should share our experience. About all I can say is, if you're in the Rocky Mountains, be careful. Although we can't say what this giant would have done, if it is aggressive, you would not want to face off with this giant. This huge man had rather long brown hair, and he had a wild beard and a mustache. There are many questions about this giant human that we just can't answer, but we saw what we saw. Both my brother and I left Colorado just as soon as we could, and since that move, we now live in Florida. You would not want to come face to face with this man. Because of his size, we can only imagine the kind of strength he must have. We felt it was our duty to at least warn people. And if there are other people out there who have seen these giants, we really hope that they'll come forward with their stories. Signed, Wayne and Ernie. Quite a few years ago, my family bought our home in the Rocky Mountains. It's close to a lake, and it's elevated 9,200 feet above sea level. We can't see any other homes from where our house sits. We have this beautiful wraparound deck that gives us such an amazing view of the mountains. This home really was a dream come true for us. Our daughter and younger son still live with us, and our older son has his own place not too far from where we live, but he also comes to visit us very often. And on one weekend, when my older son and his girlfriend were at our house to have dinner with us, we were all hanging out on the deck and enjoying the weekend and cooking on the grill. Well, our daughter started calling to us, telling us to come quick and look at something. We went to go look at whatever she was pointing at, and there was something hovering over the peaks of the mountains. We stood there looking at this huge, kind of platter-shaped object. Our middle son, who was 17 at the time, reminded us that he told us that he'd seen a UFO a couple of months ago. He said we thought he was just joking with us. He told us that the one that he saw looked exactly like this one. It hung there in the sky for a few minutes, and then a group of clouds passed by, and the object just disappeared. None of us have ever seen it again. But ever since then, we do keep an eye on the sky just in case. Okay guys, that's it for now. I'll be back in a few days with another story. Stay safe and keep your eye out for the scary and the strange.